Hey there, before the video starts, I'd like to let you know that I started a Patreon. Link in the description if interested, and I'll get back to that near the end. Hello? Hello, hello? Is, is this thing on? Ugh. How do I... Ah, here it is. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about what I've learned in regards to the two orangey-brown branch line coaches known as Annie and Clarabelle. The two sisters are old and worn and need new paint, but they can be very reliable and faithful to Thomas the Tank Engine. Speaking of, how could we talk about them without talking about the bright blue engine himself? <laughs> Fun fact, Thomas was the first engine on Sodor. That's why he's numbered one. Actually, the last number one was a coffee pot. <laughs> Coffee Pot? Coffee Pot is just a nickname for an engine with a boiler that points up in the air. Like those things people make coffee in. <laughs> the Coffee Pot engines used to look after one of the branch lines, but they don't work there now. Although, I think the last one might still be on a siding. Stop chatting and bring me my coaches! <laughs> Oh, you better do it, Thomas. I have a train to pull today, but I thought we were going to be working together. We are, just not all the time. My coaches! Where are you taking us? To Gordon. It's time for the express. But we're, we're not, not the express, express coaches. coaches. I'm Annie, and she is Clarabelle. And the express coaches are on the other sidings. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, your ladyships. You see, I'm new around here. I'm Thomas. Oh, what a sweet little engine. <laughs> Indeed, Annie. Delightful! He'll go far, Clarabelle. Just you wait and see. Okay, so let me get something straight real quick. When I first got my 3D printer, Annie and Clarabelle were by far one of the first characters, projects, anything I wanted to make. Way before I even built my first Gage 1 Thomas, like my first attempt, I should say. Annie and Clarabelle were the first ones to be slapped on that print bed and printed out. It, I was excited because I already had a Thomas model at the time. It was the first Perspex green one I made, and why not make Annie and Clarabelle to go along with them? Like uh, my first Thomas model, I didn't know really much what I was doing. I printed out the first walls, and they warped. They warped badly, and again, it was because I had a rubber bed, and not a glass one. But you know, one mistake, one little printing blunder wasn't gonna stop me. I was determined to print these bastards out. So, I printed them again. And they warped Bruh. again. They warped again. And yeah, my first attempts were maybe a year ago, so I don't have really pictures of these, so take my word for it. I tried printing them standing up, and at the time, I had absolutely no idea why they needed to be standing up when printed, but I only did it because the creator of the files I used to print, Sodor Gauge 1, he actually printed them standing up, so I was like, you know, maybe that's the way they had to be printed. But my printer just wasn't having it. The prints would either fall over or warp badly on the edges, and they took like 22 hours to print, and again, that was when I didn't have optimal settings of any kind. So then I had the ingenious idea of printing the sides laying down, which at the time I thought that was a great idea. I'd just be able to, you know, print them out and then sand them down and get rid of the nasty printer lines. But as one knows that if you print them laying down, it, it takes away the quality of the sides by a large margin. So with that mindset in place, I printed out all eight sides, all four ends, and started work on Annie and Clarabelle. And I'm gonna be honest, it turned out terribly. So bad to the point where it literally made me not want to ever think about making these guys again. I had almost no experience no idea what I was doing, and these things were turning out terribly. So, Annie and Clarabelle were then put on the back burner. 
After the horrid experience of the first attempt I had making any Clarabel, I honestly didn't want to mess with these guys ever again. I didn't want to think about it, I didn't want to make them, I just thought that it was just going to be a process and it was a process that I was not willing to endure. And that was it. I was never ever going to touch the idea of making Annie and Clarabelle ever again. <sighs> I think it's about time that I finally make Annie and Clarabelle. <laughs> Over the 10 month break, I honestly was just looking for all types of shortcuts on getting these guys done. I looked for alternatives. I looked for people that can make it for me. I asked for people to see if they had original 10 mile Strody kits, vacuum form things. People made them out of resin. I, I, I don't know. I just needed some kind of help and I was not about to 3D print these guys. I, and you guys are gonna hate me for saying this, but I contemplated Buying the cool props, Annie and Clarabelle. I beg your pardon? Ugh, yes, I know, I know. It's terrible, but it was almost about to be done. But you know what? I think I can do it. I pulled up my pants that day and I said, you know what? They may take a long time to print and they may be tedious to sand and they may be extremely hard to find the right brownie orange color for them. And heck, I don't even know if I can get them rolling smoothly, but I was gonna do it. I was about to give my boy Thomas the Tank Engine two faithful coaches. So again, I had printing problems and it wasn't anything too severe, it's just that it wasted almost 42 hours of my time, but that's fine. Things kept falling over overnight and while I was sleeping and I couldn't notice till the next morning when it was done and then I just saw this big noodle spaghetti of filament all over the place and god damn it I wanted to give up on this project immediately, but I had to prevail. I was gonna do it. Making Annie Clarabelle was going to be the next project I had aligned, oh. and ever since Emily's death, I just, I needed something to, something to be proud of. Long story short, their ends, sides, and roofs were all printed out. I was able to get them glued together. Ooh, but I also had, I think maybe three or four sides that I had printed out from when I first attempted Annie and Clarabelle that I had saved, and I was like, I might as well use them now. They look pretty good. They were the only successful side prints, and <laughs> let's just put them out there. Let's. Let's, let's use them. No one will ever know. And hey, while I'm recycling, I might as well take apart old Annie and Clarabelle and use some of their ends and faces. They are still in mint condition, so I don't think anyone would notice. Oh, and let me tell you, the amount of sanding and hard grit and labor that went into making these guys as smooth as I did, I had a few people tell me that it took them months to get them sanded down smooth. That reason alone drove me away from making Annie and Clarabelle again, but... I did it, and honestly, I did not put down that sandpaper for a solid day and a half. Oh, and I also have a resin printer now, so I was able to print all the smaller bits in resin, and yeah, the buffers, the roof flats, and the couplings were all made out of resin. Oh, and shout out to my boy, Tough Meister, Toughy, Tough Puppy over there. He made the uh, couplings I use for Annie and Clarabelle. And to follow in the Grand Master's footsteps, Sodor and Gage 1, I made their bodies... B bodies? No. I made their running boards, yeah, running boards out of wood because I wasn't about to print those things. I really wasn't. 3D printing stuff is just, I don't know why, it sets me off. But yeah, I got them made of wood. I went to Hobby Lobby, picked up a few pieces of wood, a few planks of wood, had them measured off of the files that Soda Engage One provided, and I did some cutting at home with an extremely large X-Acto knife. The wheels, of course, were 3D printed out of the silver silk PLA that I mentioned in my last tutorial video. Inside the axle boxes, I edited them to have these little openings for ball bearings that I noticed that Thomas Tank Merch actually had on some commissions he made, and there were little bearings on them. I'm like, that's a good idea. I should do that because without them, these boys can shake, and I don't like that. So the ball bearings did offer quieter and smoother running experiences.
So now it was time for the paint. Uh, choosing a paint for Annie Clarabelle, it wasn't an easy process, and it still isn't to this day, but I'm honestly satisfied with the choice I made. In the classic seasons, Annie and Clarabelle resembled this orangey color, and as the seasons progress, they become orangey brown, then just straight brown by season 12. Like, just plain brown, how does that work? I'm pretty sure the crew just slowly became colorblind as the time went on. I mean, I guess it's being under all those studio lights for, what, 20 plus years? You, I mean, I, that's gonna hurt your eyes after a while. <laughs> As you all know, I was going for that hit era look, and after season seven, they went from orangey brown to just brown, kinda. Very much so, kinda. Under the studio lights and what I'm assuming are editing filters, they, the color changes, which provided so many problems when choosing the right paint. At the time, I didn't own an airbrush, so I, I, I couldn't make a custom color, so I had to find something off the shelf. The Tamiya modeling paints, they, they didn't have anything close to it, and I was very put off by Rust-Oleum, especially since their colors didn't really look good in any other lighting besides sunlight, so... So I went to, like, Krylon paints and all forms of different spray paints, but I ended up biting the bullet and using Rust-Oleum. I don't really know what the exact brown I used, I'll pop it up on screen right... Now, and... Yeah, that's the brown I used, and it looked pretty good. It honestly does look pretty good, and when colors are together, like the roof color and the running board color and whatever else, it really does complement it, so the brown by itself doesn't look good, but when it's next to everything else that make up the model, it, it works. Here's when things get frustrating. I can't say for the life of me that my Annie and Clarabelle are based off of a specific season, and I don't think I can even say that for my Thomas model, but my Thomas is more loosely based off of the season 8 model, but that's not what we're talking about. My Annie and Clarabelle have attributes of almost all different seasons, classic and hit era, and it's not even because I couldn't find or work it into my model, it's just because I liked other features better than others. The brown I chose for these guys closely resembled the season 9, season 10 models, but the, the roofs, they don't. They closely represent the season 11 models, or maybe season 7? It's a dark gray, but it isn't the dark, dark gray that season 12 is. And it isn't a light gray like season 1 and 2 and 3, but it's also darker than season 6. Annie and Clarabelle's wheels have went from being spoked wheels to solid wheels, I don't know from what point, but I know they were solid, spoked, then solid again. I don't know from which seasons, but I'll probably show them in clips or something. I know in season 7 their axle boxes were the smaller ones, and sometime between season 8 and 12 they changed them to the bigger ones, but in season 1 through 5 they also had bigger ones, and I don't know. I honestly don't know when and how and why they changed them, but Annie and Clarabelle are the most inconsistent characters. They're the most inconsistently painted, uh, decorated, colored, whatever characters in the entire series, or at least the model series, because no part of them stays the same from season to season. Not to mention the fact that in season 1 through 12, their faces change an awful lot. Their overall build quality changes because I know in season 12, they look absolutely immaculate. In season 1, they look pretty worn down as if they used them for like 10 seasons before the first episode. And and I don't know, it's, I, I just can't wrap my head around it and I don't understand. So you see all the complications that I had to think about when creating Annie and Clarabelle. It's not as simple as, oh, I want to make a season 8 Annie and Clarabelle and move on without my day. It just simply wasn't that easy. So I'd like to say that my Annie and Clarabelle is just a hodgepodge of everything great about the hit era versions of them. They've got a season 7 body, they've got season 6 faces, they've got season 7 buffer beams, they got season 11 axle boxes, season 12 interiors, after they were all put together. Wait, 
Wait, before I, wait, hold on. Before I say what I'm about to say next, their insides actually were supposed to have interior lighting. They still are, so I'll have an update video on that sometime, whenever, whenever I put them back in. And they also have red seats, black floors, and brown walls, just like the Cool Props version of Annie and Clarabelle. They were modeled, 3D printed, and spray painted red, and just, you know, slapped inside them. Then the handrails. The handrails are as simple as I used a uh, golden wire. I just bent them into shape. I drill holes in the side of them where they're supposed to be. They got doorknobs and handrails now. So Annie and Clarabo were finally looking the part. Only thing I had to do left was get their name tags and name tags, name plates, decals. Whatever you want to call them. I had to make those. There was absolutely no way I was about to take a white Sharpie to these things and do it by hand. And I guess it was about time that I bought myself a vinyl cutter. <laughs> yes, sir. I may or may not be customizing my Bachman Thomas anytime soon, but I just, I just wanted to tell you guys that. So I had these name tags, you know, custom cut by the vinyl cutter. The name tags were actually made by Sodor Engage One again. So thank you to that guy. And there we have it. My Annie Clarabelle models were complete. I went outside, took some pictures of them, and I live in Arizona, so that was by far one of the dumbest decisions I could have possibly made. And right after this picture was taken, the roof warped. Both of them. <laughs> Oh, I felt so horrible, but my brother had a heat gun, so I tried my best to, you know, just warp them back into shape, repaint it and filled in any cracks, and they're fine now. They just add a little bit more character to the to the models. I just, I'm making a new roof for Clarabelle as we speak, so I, I think we're fine. I think we're good. And there we had it. That's Annie and Clarabelle. They're all built, they look good, and... <laughs> Who am I kidding? Do you see how long this video is? Yeah, no. There's more. I finished Annie and Clarabelle, and I coupled them up behind Thomas, and to my surprise, Thomas wasn't able to pull them. <laughs> they, they, they put a strain on his side rods, and they caused his side rods to... Yeah. So there was only one thing I had to do, and that was to pretty much upgrade Thomas. <laughs> and Thomas 2.0 was a go. Thomas's chassis wasn't the only thing that had to be, you know, upgraded. I had to repaint his running board, repaint his faces, because I also learned that Thomas's face was too light. His color was too light, and in videos and on camera, it turns out that his face looks literally like they're white. I tried using darker colors I had at hand. I asked a friend what other colors he suggests. He suggests a darker gray. I forgot what color it is. It's a Rust-Oleum color. Here's the picture. And that face was way too dark. I asked another friend, hey, what color do you use? Because they look pretty good. He suggests touch and tone primer. And hey, I liked it. It worked. It looked really good. And of course, his face wasn't the only thing that got repainted. His entire body was stripped down and repainted as well. After Thomas was all repainted and dried, I had to reline him, give him a new number. I used my brand new freaking Cricut cutter and printed out solid lining that I can apply in all in one go. And honestly, this saved me so much time. I cut up some new numbers. I cut out the yellow vinyl and my boy looking fresh. Also, I know I told you guys to this awesome way of, you know, doing Thomas's splasher curve lining, but uh, <laughs> I'm not like you guys anymore. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better, I am better. And the way I put Thomas on his body now, it isn't hot glue. Yes, sir, I've upgraded. After doing some thorough analysis on the Cool Props Thomas, I found a picture of apparently how they did it with the brass models and his body is screwed to the running board. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I also used the brass models construction behind the scenes pictures to look at the smoke box. And it has like this little connecting brim around the inside that, that apparently stabilizes the smoke box when the iMac is in use because if there's nothing there, 
it, the smoke box just kind of like wiggles around. So the smoke box is just held in by that, and you know, it, it works. Thomas the Side Rods, I made a post about it a few months ago, asking if Thomas the Side Rods have always been one piece or if they're two pieces. And I know there's some side rods that are one solid rod, like his classic series rods, and I believe the Great Discovery models had a solid rod, but the Thomas model I'm trying to replicate is the one they had in season seven and eight. So I did a little experimentations and printed out Thomas the side rods in two separate pieces. Now that my chassis is all geared together, the wheels aren't being carried by the rods, they're being carried by the gears. So now the outside rods are pretty much for style and I like it. There was honestly no way in the world that I could have made this video long enough and just talk about Annie and Clarabelle. Plus, Thomas himself had quite a few upgrades, and he probably will have more upgrades in the future, something in which I will talk about. So yeah, Thomas will have many things that improve him later on down the line. As many of you all know that this is not my first Thomas model, I've actually revealed a Thomas model way back earlier this summer, and that model is now in the caring hands of Marvin Jerry. Uh, thank you, be well on Twitter. Y you know him. I'll just tag him right here. He's been taking great care of the model. He's been upgrading him. He's been pretty much treating him well. He was at Edison earlier this year. He sent him to another friend, and that friend is also making new faces for him. So that Thomas is living it up all around the world. So I guess we can say that Thomas really did go off to see the world. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. I actually have a few more models in the works right now. <coughs> and you're gonna hopefully see those guys pretty soon. So with that being said, let's roll them credits. A few days later, an engine came into the yard that Thomas and Edward had never seen before. <laughs> James, is that really you? Of course it is. <laughs> How do you like my new paintwork? Wow, James, you look splendid. I know. I'm ready for my coaches. We're Thomas's coaches now, James. That's right. And he's got his very own branch line, too. Off to see the world now, Thomas? <laughs> yes, Edward, I am. Wake up, lazy bones! Really useful engine coming through! <laughs> oh, the indignity. He's a really useful engine, you know. All the other engines, they'll tell you so. He huffs and puffs and whistles, rushing to and fro. He's the really useful engine we adore. He's the one, he's the one, he's the really useful engine that we adore. He's the one, he's the number one, Thomas the Tank Engine. He's a really useful engine, you know. So Topham had well, he told him so. Now he's got a branch line to call his very own. He's the really useful engine we adore. He's the one.
And in other news, I made a Patreon. I'm not gonna really be posting that many progress pics on Twitter anymore as to keep most of my videos and model ideas a surprise. So if you're interested in anything I've got going on, I'll be uploading them there. Join today and you'll be able to enjoy all kinds of perks like watching YouTube videos days before they come out, behind the scenes content, and a lot more. <laughs> Becoming a patron allows you to have all of your artwork and models and pictures and videos at the end of my credits like this. So if you're even slightly interested, there will be links in the description. Thank you all for watching, and this is your favorite Tank Engine John John signing off.